Then Jalop Demi is about to help him. And money cutouts are used as an encounter between Nigeria and Ghana national teams. Who is going to win? You are going to have a very important discussion on this topic. As usual, we invite and solicit your ideas. As I always say, you can choose to disagree or agree substantively. You are in the democratic dispensation. Divergence is also one form of what you choose to tolerate people's idea. You will go into the discussion, but before that, if you are new on this platform, just subscribe to the channel. Tap on the post notification bell for more updates. Like this video and share to other social media platforms. I'm here with my analyzer, Nanayao Osei Ajman. Before I turn to Nanayao Osei Ajman, just know that we've made it in episodes. So this is the first episode of Ghana versus Nigeria here on Sports Filler. Nana, I once again Chama, welcome you to Sports Filler. My grace, everything fine. How are things going? My grace, you know. Today is Monday and it's very energetic and you know, it's the start of the week so as always we are here to give uh, the world the best of analysis and the punditry and everything concerning this big game between Ghana and Nigeria the Jolof Derby oh okay mm. Ghana Jolof or Nigeria Jolof nah this is Ghana Jolof, Ghana, Jolof. of course I'm a yes. Ghanaian I have to Nigeria Jolof is also very nice you need to try it I've never tried Nigeria. I was in Leke new yeah. Leke yeah. oh okay yeah, Leke. where no. was that Leke I think somewhere somewhere last year uh, ending of the year, I went to Lekeo with somebody to buy something. I'm telling you, Nigerian Jolof, oh my days. Oh, okay. Very amazing. So you are going for Nigerian Jolof? Are you a Nigerian I'm now? a Ghanaian, but I'm saying that you need to also test Nigerian oh, Jolof. So I have to taste that good. one yes. too. Yes, as in the food aspect. No, oh, okay. Uh, their Jolof is also very nice, you know. All right. Yeah. Were you able to go to uh, chess this Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, this Sunday, I didn't go because of, the, you know, the All-African Games. I had a TV start on I have to go to the park and see photos on how things will go at Portiman. So I wasn't able to go. But at least... God understands our work. He knows that we won't be able to make it always. Yes, so. All right. As usual, our theme for today mm. is Ghana versus Nigeria, episode mm. one. Mm. Your take on this friendly match. But before that, let me address this one to the viewers. That it has been confirmed by the Nigerian Football Association. It's mm. yet to be confirmed by the Ghana Football Association. Mm. So let's elaborate and know how things will go. Definitely to be confirmed by Ghana Football Association. Mm. We are all coachless. Nana, your take yeah. on the game. I'll start from uh, this angle that we saw the Super Eagles in the AFCON in Abidjan, La Côte d'Ivoire. Before the AFCON, most of the games that they played, even at their backyard at Lagos, we saw them losing to some smaller nations that are now finding their ways to in terms of African football. The Nigerian football have not been in that shape that we've known from the days of Tai Taiwo, Obafini Martins, Yakubu Ibeni, and the likes. Almost about five years down the lane. They have dropped in terms of even their coaching staff and performances wise. We all saw their game with Ghana during a double header for the Mondial qualified Qatar when they came to Kumasi. We dude, we went to uh, Abuja, Mosi Tabula, we played one one, we qualified on argument. But to me, this game is going to be a very interesting game. Now, even at the current FIFA World Ranking, Nigeria have double mm -hmm. have lifted because of what they did at the, at the AFCON. They went to the final with um the elephant of La Côte d'Ivoire. I'm very happy to see players like Rufred and Didi coming back to the, the squad, the 26 man squad that the coach have at least oh, okay. announced. All right. Because Didi have been one of the players that who plays for, uh, Leicester City at the Kimpower Stadium alongside, uh, our Ghanaian brother as well. Yeah, you, sir. Yes. But I think that I'm very happy to see Rufred and Didi coming back to, to, to the national team. To me, I saw more of experience from Alex Mwobi. Chukan will be at the AFCON when uh, he also impacted for the Super Eagles. Now, let's not forget that performances-wise, Nigerians are far better now as a stand than us. Mm -hmm. Individual players. Mm -hmm. The Kalechi Inachu, the Victor Osimen, the Lukma Adelomo and the Lies, they are better Adelomo. than us. Okay. Adelomo, Adelomo. They are better than us. In terms of player to player, we saw what they did in the AFCON. Even though they didn't start very well, but they were able to at least manage themselves through to get to the final against the host nation and they played very well. Getting that first goal from, from their captain. Oh, okay. But rather unfortunate, Nigerians came, uh, Avicos came out very strong to at least win the ultimate. So, if you ask me, I think that looking at the squad that Nigeria have paraded for this, uh, KG friendly game, <laughs> player to player, senior, they are far better than us. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't forget that because we have been in a mess in Afcon, we are also about to build our but team I think again. About 70% mm. of this team was yeah. what Ghana was able to trample over yeah. to get to the Qatar 2020 yes. World Cup. Let's, let's, now, why let's, 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 this let's, team is... let's take the current state of the Nigerian national team now as compared to when we played against them at Abuja. Mm -hmm. Okay? The enthusiasm, that, that, that desire for that national team is now there. Because don't forget that 
their, their, their level of faith have also increased because they felt they went to the Afghan, they were able to go to the final. Mm -hmm. So that pedigree have also lifted them up in terms of boosting their own confidence as a national team and individual players. That is what the blasters are not having. They were even attributing it to that. It was a goalkeeping problem yes. that led to their yes. loss against Ghana yes. United. Yes. Now they've gotten yes. a certain yes. in Wabali of it. Yeah, who is doing massive. And exactly. don't forget now, we are, we, are having, we are having a new coach who's also coming to take charge for the blasters. Need to build, Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria. Need to build the, the, I am talking in, in the angle of Ghanaians and what things have gone. Oh, in okay. a reflection. He need to build the team from a certain angle. It will take time. This game is going to be a very big game and very crazy game in Kanta. I'm, t I'm telling you. You see, even when I went to the AFCON, Nigeria did not see more from Victor Osimhen. Oh, okay. And for this game, he also want to come out and let the world know that at least, look at Kevin Bassi. Sending fantastic player who did massive for Nigeria. I think Omar Sadiq have also joined the yeah, national team. So I think to me, uh, senior, it will take head to head. As in a year now, the Super Eagles are far better, better than Ghana. Notwithstanding that even though we went to the Monday, they are better than us. Okay. Head to head. And per what we saw in the AFCON. So this is an open game for all the national teams, the two national teams, for the new coaches also to try their players and know how to package the team very well for the AFCON qualifier and the World Cup qualifier. Okay. So I, mean, I think it's going to be an open game, a very exciting game, but it's going to be very difficult for Ghana. Because Nigerians now have a team that is compact and solid because of how they were able to find their way through to the final of the AFCON. That boasting of their energy in the team have really gone very hard. They feel that now we went to the AFCON, now everybody was underwriting Nigeria, that whatever, but we were able to go to the final. To me, it's also a way of uh, another uh, international friendly boundary between Ghana and Nigeria. You know, whenever we are playing together, it also brings a, a form of marketable business relationship between me and the Nigerians. Yeah. But let's be honest to us. So as it stands now, the call up for the Ghana, Ghana national team is not yet in. Yeah. But when you look at the team that the Nigerian coach, coach have paraded, 26 man squad, to me, I think that they are in for business and Ghana is going to have a very tough side oh, playing okay. against a team that was able to go to the final in the recent Afghan and get that bronze there is going to be difficult for, 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 for Ghana. But let's not withstand that. We're also going to have a new coach who's going to come with philosophy. I believe that. Uh, this game is also going to be a game that I think that will be a preparation and a very shaping of the blaster. But let's not forget, let's be honest, Nigerians are better as now, more than the blasters of Ghana. All right, Nigerians are better than us, as it stands now, currently, in a year. That is what Nanaya Osei Ajman is saying. Now, let me go to the second question. Nanaya, do you think this friendly match is very important? Yes, senior, it's very, very, very important. You see, it's very, very important for Ghana. For Ghana. For Ghana, you know why? Because we had a lot of disappointment in the AFCON that we, we went. So our national team need to be tried and tested. Okay? So now, we couldn't have gone for a team like Namibia, uh, Gabon, Comoros, but a team like Nigeria, uh, South Africa, to the AFCON final. Or, 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 yes, Nigeria, South Africa, or Ivory Coast. Because. So that we will see that if really, Per the qualifying matches that we are about to play for the AFCON and the World Cup qualifying, if we can transcend that performance into the qualifiers. So I think that this is going to be a heated match, even more than the World Cup qualifier that we played with Nigeria. Because oh, okay. they are coming back as a payback time, because we, we spoiled their party. In their own backyard at Abuja, sure. they didn't go to the World Cup. You know what happened? By they did, party. Yes, they destroyed most of the things at the stadium. So that pain is still in the Nigerians. So they want to come for re revenge. All right. And like I'm saying, this match is very important for the love of, of Ghanaians also come back to the blasters. Even though let's not deceive ourselves, Nigerians are better than us as it stands now. But if Ghana is able to win against Nigeria, that love will also what come back. Because now if you go to town and you talk about blasters, even the market women who are selling on sort you, you say, oh, these people, this people, because of what they saw at the Africa, we saw an old woman who was crying when Ghana lost our game with Mozambique. Mm -hmm. Whooping like, Crying. So you see, mothers, children, whatever, they all, they all love the blasters. Yes. So to Even me, I Ghana think, is a yes. football nation. So to me, to me, I think this game is very, very important for any coach that is coming to take charge for the blaster and the players themselves. Okay. That paint black that they were painted on them at the AFCON, this is a time for them to make it white. So it's not important on the side of Nigeria. But to me, I think this game is important on the side 
for the blasters in Ghana. As you were saying, mm. you were going for Nigeria. Nigeria I yeah. think you think Nigeria will be able to trample over Ghana mm. during the international yeah. friendly game. I also want to ask, can Ghana do something in order to overcome those results? Or well, turn this results? Uh, uh, um, like I said, it's going to be a KG encounter, senior. It's going to be an open mindful game that any coach that tactically, okay, can very well be able to win this game. See, this is going to be a difficult game. Ghana only have to come out very well, okay? We need to get the right players. Good starting 11. We have made errors in the AFCON. Yeah. I think any coach that is coming out saw what Chris Wooten did. So he also want to learn from that. So those, those mistakes should not be repeated in our game with Nigeria. Don't, don't think that it's just a friendly game. No. If you score Nigeria right now, we can also shoot in so, terms of our ranking and everything. So I think that to me, it's going to be a difficult game for Ghana. But hey, if you are able to at least come out very well, let's not say it's just a friendly game. We're going to try players. Let's come in and see if we are playing an Afcon. This is not Matlam Akwe. No, let's play players who are willing to at least play. Starting 11, let's use them to play. It doesn't matter if it's a local player who's good, if it's a foreign player. We are playing against the second runners up of the Afcon currently Afcon ended. And they are better than us. So this game is very, very important to Ghana. You see, let me tell you something. Ghanaians and the GFA also have an advantage to win the love back. That love that Kurt have been calling for is when we're able to beat the Nigerians. I'm telling you now, nobody loves the blasters. So, if you talk about a blaster, they won't sort you. Nobody want to hear anything about blasters. <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, I'm telling you, if you go and sit in the trot when you raise blasters issue right now, they will sort you because of what they did, that humiliation they gave Ghanaians at Abidjan. Even on the last match in Mozambique. Of course, that was the whole upset. Yes, yeah, so to me, I think that this game is very important to whoever, either Otuan or whoever that is going to take charge for the Blasters, it's important that we use this game to rebrand the ourselves. Blasters. We should not play with anything better than Nigeria. I think it's a good initiative from the two federations of football federation. To me, I think we should take this game serious and use this as a stand to come back from our mess that we went to create at Abidjan. All right, that is all from my analyzer, Nanayao Osei Ajiman. His take on the episode one of Ghana versus Nigeria. You go into it, we have more for you. You assess the players from the goalkeeping department to the striking department. You assess the team based on the technical. So what I have to tell you and what I want to tell you is we have more intriguing, enlightening, and exciting content on this platform. What you also have to do is subscribe to this new platform. You turn on the notification bell for more updates. Give us more likes and share to other social media platforms. I was being supported by my hard-working cameraman, Kinsley K2. Let's meet in the next one. Bye-bye.